Good day everyone, welcome back to Yellow Submarine, your dedicated Beatles channel. It's great to meet again. In this video, we'll break down the connection between Sgt Pepper, Alistair Crowley and the Beatles music. But first, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. The Beatles are a band wrapped in magic and mystery, in addition to being one of the most popular bands of all time. The Fab Four have always had a darker side, whether it's the ridiculous notion of Rosemary's curse befalling John Lennon or Paul McCartney dying and being immediately replaced by a doppelganger. Another mystery surrounding the band's seminal 1967 album, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, was who the titular character was or who it was inspired by. Many believe it's a cultist author Alistair Crowley. Despite living during the times of both Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler, Crowley soon rose to prominence during the swinging 60s, as his esoteric wizardry was too alluring to ignore. Crowley's mansion was also purchased by Jimmy Page when he became increasingly interested in the extraordinary figure. The Beatles were certainly fans of the author, as seen by his inclusion in the Sgt Pepper album artwork. With so many conspiracy theories surrounding the Beatles, it's a safe bet that at least one of them is accurate. But we have a feeling this isn't one of them. McCartney producing Sgt Pepper on his own is more likely than Crowley being an inspirational figure to the Fab Four. After all, he wrote the entire record. The story behind the album cover art. The Beatles classic album Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band depicts the four band members posing with 71 prominent persons on the record cover art. Alistair Crowley was included in this list. Posing in front of life-size black and white images of several dozen renowned people were used to create the album art. Jan Hathworth and Peter Blake, who received the Grammy Award for Best Album Cover in 1967, were the artists. The idea, according to Blake, was to represent the Beatles as a band surrounded by admirers after a concert, but because they were using cutouts, they could use whomever they wanted as the fans, including dead or imaginary persons. According to Blake, George Harrison recommended using all Indian gurus, but Ringo remarked it didn't matter what the other members came up with. So why not listen to Paul McCartney's favourite Beatles record and try to figure out who Sgt Pepper is? How was Alistair Crowley included? Paul McCartney presented the idea for the album cover in 1967, when he asked the other band members to come up with a list of renowned persons to feature in the artwork. While it's not confirmed, most people believe John Lennon was the one who proposed Crowley be included. It's commonly known that Lennon considered Adolf Hitler and Friedrich Nietzsche in the list. During this time, Lennon was a regular at Indica Books, a counterculture bookstore run by Paul McCartney's close friend and future biographer Barry Miles, where he bought a Nietzsche book. A book called The Black Arts was published a few months before the CD was released in 1967, and it popularised Alistair Crowley. Barry Miles was interested in Crowley and magic and could have suggested it to John Lennon. The Wickedest Man in the World Beatle maniacs have been debating the identity of the real Sgt Pepper for nearly 50 years, and considering the fame of the band, there are a plethora of hypotheses floating about who the real Sgt Pepper is. For decades, one of the most prevalent theories among Beatle fans has been that Sgt Pepper is Alistair Crowley, a guy once dubbed the wickedest man in the world. This has been a conversation shrouded in mystery, just like many other aspects of the universe in which the Beatles reside. The number of bizarre conspiracy theories surrounding Surrounding the Beatles is virtually inexhaustible, but one of the most intriguing questions surrounds their legendary 1967 album Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and more particularly, who was the inspiration for the record? The list of people who have been rumoured to be Sgt Pepper is long, but none of them seem more credible than the notorious esoteric author Alistair Crowley. Crowley's belief system was labelled as Thelema, which was more formally defined as a magico-religious ideology and a new religious movement. It's also been described as a modern type of paganism. The writer would be dubbed the wickedest man alive by Thelema, yet despite this reputation, there was something about him that drew the likes of the Beatles to him after his death in 1947, when he became culturally immortalised. Crowley declared in his autobiography that his life's objective was to introduce oriental wisdom to Europe and restore paganism in a purer form. He was influenced by a diverse range of thought, from Eastern religious movements and practices such as Hindu yoga and Buddhism to scientific naturalism, yet one hypothesis claims he was a genuine believer in magic. Crowley had an allure that drew the likes of David Bowie, Led Zeppelin, Red Hot Chili Peppers and others from the music world to pay respect to him in some form, but none more famous 
famous than the Beatles. Although the photo of Pepper on the album is soldier James Melvin Babington, this hasn't stopped conspiracy theorists from claiming that Crowley is the real Sgt. Pepper. The album was released 20 years after Crowley's death, which the band seems to reference in the first line of the song. It was 20 years ago today, Sgt. Pepper taught the band to play, implying that they're identifying themselves with the occultist. Lennon's 1980 interview with Playboy's David Chef seemed to substantiate this. The whole Beatle idea was to do what you want, right? Lennon said in the interview, seemingly repeating Crowley's most famous teaching. Do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. Isn't it true that you should accept responsibility for yourself? Do what you want and try not to damage others. Do whatever you want as long as you don't injure anyone. The fact that Lennon said these words implies that it isn't just another Beatles conspiracy theory like the iconic Paul is Dead rumor, and that the claim that Crowley is the real Sgt. Pepper might have some merit. If albums had a director within a band, I sort of directed Pepper, Paul McCartney stated in a 1990 interview. Later, he returned to this theme saying, It wasn't totally my idea, but to get us away from being the Beatles, I came up with a notion of pretending to be this other group. He reiterates that he would like not to choose only one of his and the band's albums, but if I had to, he says, I'd choose it. There is enough evidence to encourage additional study into the possibility that the Beatles were Freemasons, or at the very least shared their principles. On the cover of the Sgt. Pepper record, there are at least 11 known Freemasons. One of them was, of course, Crowley himself. When would the Beatles have time to be initiated into the higher Masonic degrees, one would wonder. And while we don't have a solution for this exact question, their music and artwork are rich in symbolism and esoteric knowledge. Paul's father may have taught him a little about Freemasonry. Perhaps Paul was brainwashed into Freemasonry by Jane Asher and her family. It's possible they used it when they were in Hamburg, hanging out with Astrid and a circle of existentialist friends. Perhaps they were nurtured and molded from a young age to do this. The truth could be staring us in the face after over five decades of concealment. Bottom line, is the album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band a tribute to Crowley and Freemasonry? Hold on tight to your Beatle wigs and pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm sure most of you are aware that the Beatles, at least some of the Beatles, admire Mr. Alistair Crowley. Paul McCartney requested that he be included on the Sgt. Pepper album, and he was. Perhaps the Beatles, especially John and Paul, with a little help from their friends Sir Peter Blake and groovy Bob Frazier, intended Sgt. Pepper to be a tribute to Crowley, whom they respected. Finally, all of this is just supposition. Maybe you're grasping at straws, looking for a conspiracy in everything, even within conspiracy theories themselves. Nonetheless, we have made an unusual link and thought we'd share it with anyone who might be interested. Crowley isn't the only character in this story. There's a lot more intrigue and involvement in the Paul is Dead drama. As previously said, it's difficult to separate fact from fiction in the case of both Paul McCartney and Alistair Crowley. They appear to resonate strangely well with each other, echoing each other in weird ways on seemingly bizarre occasions, as explored in later videos on this channel. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications. Now, if you'll excuse me, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.